Good morning, Adam. Milton Collins here. Um, great to have you on board. We have today Adam Centurino. Um, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Adam, but you're sure That's you right. correct me. Great to be here. Excellent. Good. So, so let's start off with, tell us a bit about yourself and about your business. Uh, so I founded the business um, back straight out of high school. Um, I was uh, you know, uh, the son of teachers. So if I didn't do well at high school, I'd be in trouble. Um, got into uh, uni and uh, decided that uni wasn't for me after about four hours. Uh, so <laughs> I was a uni dropout, but um, unfortunately they still uh, stung me for the uh, the term fees because I think it was census day or something. So I had to do that, but uh, decided to um, roll up at my local accountant and um, start a business, uh, ask them how to start a business. I had you know, an entire family of teachers, so I had no idea uh, how to even start or where to start or what an ABN was or any of these kind of uh, tax related things. Uh, so the accountant is really the one that uh, kicked me off and uh, he said, well, I'll be your first client. So uh, that's really where I started. Um, and yeah, the business has been going now for about 16 years uh, and uh, it's been a great journey. Uh, lots of learnings along the way. Tell us about the business. What is it? So I own a uh, managed IT service business. Uh, we're an IT support business that focuses on um, supporting customers with their technology setups uh, and helping them from a strategic direction as to uh, implementing technology in their business and making sure it's as, their businesses are as efficient as possible uh, and that uh, as many of those processes are automated and, um, and managed through the use of good technology and good practices. Uh, and of course, cyber being a big thing today um, plays a massive part in, uh, in also what we do. Fantastic. I should have be a huge demand at the moment too with the cyber scares and so on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's always uh, it's always very topical, uh, especially as the the big the big players get hacked or or something happens. I imagine the phones ring hot after the the Medicare scares and the big ones that go through. So probably great marketing yeah. for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, it's it, it's really interesting to see a lot of boards really don't understand the um, their own IT landscapes uh, and their own they put a lot of trust in their own teams. Uh, to, you know, protect the, the organization's data assets, uh, but they really don't have a grasp of um, how much that can go. And the other flip side to that is a lot of the times IT teams are uh, asking for money and unfortunately boards just say, no, we've got bigger priorities. Um, so, you know, cybersecurity, I think, is, a, is not a priority until it becomes a priority, uh, right. in which case it may be too late. Right. Who'd be your ideal client or customer? Uh, so from uh, my business perspective, um, we service customers from 25 users to 2,500 users, uh, and they generally come from either not-for-profit, government, um, the education sector, uh, professional services, uh, or healthcare. They're really the, the five sectors we, we focus on. Right. What is the biggest challenge you're facing in the business right now? Um, I think from a... a uh, global economic uh, situation. There's obviously you know a lot of talk about recession, uh, and whilst we're not necessarily feeling it in our sector and our and the markets in which we play yet, um, I certainly think that's going to be uh, a relatively large challenge for us in the next six months or so. Um, we're finding it a lot easier at the moment to get staffing. Staffing uh, problems have have somewhat um, gone down. We you know we saw the unemployment rates um, tick up a little bit, um, mm. and so. We're certainly seeing that, but I think from our perspective, the, the absolute biggest challenge that we'll see is um, just making sure that we're well prepared for whatever may come uh, in in the market over the next kind of six months. Well, what's the biggest learning you've had since being a business owner? Yeah, sorry, I think I froze for a sorry, second. Adam, that just froze um, for a moment back. then. Yeah. 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 We can edit that out. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah no problems. Um, sorry, what was the question again? Yeah, that's right. Um, what's the biggest learning you've had since being a business owner? So starting off, you know, straight out of high school, I was a, a rookie, didn't know anything about business. Um, and so there was a lot of learnings that I've, I've taken over the years. Um, I started off early on uh, hiring mates and hiring uh, people that um, I could get at the kind of, you know, relatively low cost. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, but that also meant that I was somewhat unskilled. 
uh, and weren't experts in their field and, and weren't professionals. So um, I did all this work trying to win new customers. Uh, and then unfortunately, we just didn't uh, support it with that. And whilst my mates are really great, you know, some of the team members that, um, you know, we had, we had it in the early days just weren't cutting it. And so we lost, we ended up losing the clients at the back end. Uh, and so that, that was probably one of the, the real uh, big turning points uh, for me in business. Uh, the second thing was really around cash flow. Um, you know, they always say cash is king, um, but I was working on hourly rates and uh, there were times when, you know, about 50% of our business was education uh, back in the early days. And one of the challenges was during school holidays, the cash stopped because uh, we weren't doing it. You know, there was no work to be done. So uh, figuring out a model that meant that uh, we could keep the cash coming in and that things uh, we were able to, you know, keep um, having money being generated through even those quiet periods for our customers was really important uh, from a cash flow perspective. What have you learned about yourself during business? Uh, I'm incredibly impatient. Uh, I want everything <laughs> yesterday. Um, yeah. and I'm very, very focused on, uh, a goal. So I set myself goals for the year, uh, and I'm right. absolutely focused on those goals. I generally don't, uh, let anything get in the way of, of achieving those. Uh, and, and that's somewhat difficult, um, because obviously there's a lot of, uh, you need a team and you need people around you to, to, and you need to bring them on the journey. Um, and so I know that, um, I've learned about myself that I'm, I am a great communicator, uh, but making sure that everyone is actually competent and, and agrees with the target and knows where we're going and knows what they need to contribute to achieve it um, is something that's uh, been really important. And so that's something that um, I'm really passionate about and um, you know, put a lot of effort into trying to make sure we achieve. Fantastic. How do you find your inspiration each day to keep doing what you do? I'm very, uh, I'm very ambitious. I always have been as a kid. Mum um, always used to tell me how ambitious I was. You know, I set myself uh, on a particular task and I just push myself. Um, so those goals are really what, what um, galvanizes my ambition and my focus for the, the day and the year. Um, from, from time to time, you know, it, it wavers. Um, I can't say I do that, you know, 365 days a year, um, but <laughs> fundamentally, Mentally, I try and have a bit of a routine. So I you know, get to the gym each morning um, and it kind of sets me off for the day um, uh, to, fo yeah, to focus on it. I also generally will review uh, my progress each week uh, against those goals and make sure that uh, I'm still uh, going in the, in the right direction and make any adjustments as I need to. Right, fantastic. What would you say to someone thinking of going into business? I think um, entering into the business world is uh, fantastic and a, a great opportunity. Um, and it's something you've got to be really prepared to do. Um, it's hard, right? Like there's no, you know, I've got no one to call in sick to. Um, there's no one that I can, um, you know, lean on for support and advice. And, and that's something that, again, I had to learn relatively early on. So uh, for people going into, into business, you've got to be prepared to put the hard yards in. If you want a nine to five job, you know, work for someone else um, because it's literally in business, it's a dog eat dog world. Um, you need to prove that you've got the stamina, you've got the motivation, you've got the energy to keep going day in, day out, to persevere with something that likely you're not going to make any money out of for the first year or two, um, sometimes three, if you're not lucky, um, but you've got to persevere with it. You've, you've got to keep going. You've got to figure out, um, you've got to be willing, I guess, to be vulnerable. Uh, and understand where you're not doing so well or where your weaknesses are and where your competitors are somewhat outsmarting you or outstripping you. Uh, and so that, they're the areas to absolutely focus on and put as much energy as you can into overpowering and overcoming those so that you can be top of your game. Are there any favourite sayings or quotes or books you've read that's helped you in business? Uh, yes. Uh, all of the above. Um, so <laughs> right. from, my, from my perspective, um, there's a couple of uh, quotes that I use internally a lot. Um, one is uh, that the only change at CT is, con sorry, sorry. One of them is that the only con constant at CT is change. Um, right. If we're not going forwards, we're going backwards. Um, you, there's no such thing as kind of staying still. Uh, so that's really one of the, the key mantras that I live by and, and push our teams. Um, the other one is go hard or go home. If we're going to try and do something, um, then go as hard as we can uh, for that. 
don't take mediocrity or, or complacency as being, yep, that's good enough. Um, there's in my book, there's no such thing as, you know, it's done if it's good enough. It's how do we be the best? How do we go as hard as we can? How do we focus on that? Um, and I kind of push that right across the business, even so much as uh, in our values uh, that we share right across the business. So, you know, when we were looking at uh, our environmental play and you know, how we were going to be sustainable, um, that was something that, you know, as a millennial, that was something that was passionate to me. And so um, we decided that, you know, I wasn't going to set these targets for 2050 or 2035 that, you know, were so far away that, you know, they almost mean nothing. I wanted to figure out how I was going to achieve it now. I said earlier that I'm impatient. Uh, and so, you know, in 2019, we achieved 100% carbon neutral. Uh, we've been 20%. This year, we'll, we'll, we should hit 20% carbon negative. Um, we've had 20% waste reduction programs across the business for the last uh, three years. So it's those kind of things where I say, you know, if we're going to do it, let's go really hard and do it well. Otherwise, let's not do it at all. Um, and, and, and that's really uh, stuck with me the whole time. Fantastic. If you start your business again, what would you do differently? Oh, great question. Um, I would certainly uh, try and bring on a mentor a lot earlier. Um, you know, as I said earlier, my, my parents and my family are all teachers. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with teachers, but they just don't have the, I guess, business acumen that I could rely on uh, to help set me up. Um, so I probably need to get out, I probably would uh, have gotten out of my own way a little bit sooner. Um, taken the pride factor down a little bit and said, yep, I'm getting as much help as I can and as much support as I can early on um, so that I don't have to make a lot of the mistakes that I did make throughout business. Um, that's probably the fundamental change I'd make. Wow. Do you have a mentor now? I do. I have multiple. Um, yeah. So I tend to try and find people that are really good at one particular thing that um, I I. I look up to them as and say, yes, these guys or these people uh, have are a leader in their field or have really thought through a process really well. Uh, and so I'll frequently uh, bounce off all of them uh, or various people for uh, advice. Um, you know, I have a daily, uh, probably daily check in with um, each of them um, in various ways or forms. Um, not so much a formal meeting or anything like that, but, you know, even this morning, for example, uh, we've got the budget coming out today. Uh, and so from our, my perspective, I, I asked, I shot off a message to three of them just asking what they were going to do if certain situations arose. Uh, and so that helped me to formulate what we would do uh, from there. So I try and check in from quite frequently. Right. What's the best advice you give to your 18-year-old self? <laughs> if I were, uh, if I had the uh, opportunity to go back and, and be 18, I'd say, uh, number one, I'd really focus on myself a little bit more. Um, it took me a while to get into the fitness regime. Um, I, I, I let that lapse a little bit. Uh, and you know, for me, mind and your body have to be really strong in order to sustain uh, business for the long term. You know, we work crazy amounts of hours, um, and I'm really passionate about the business. But I would have um, absolutely tried to counter that with just looking after myself a little bit better as well. Uh, second. Um, as I said, try and get a bit of a mentor or someone to help guide me uh, sooner. Um, and third, I would have probably taken on a little bit more risk than I did. Um, I was a little bit conservative at the start, you know, living under my parents' roof, uh, having your parents kind of funding your lifestyle and funding everything that you do. Uh, you've got this unique ability to uh, take risks that really there's very few co um, uh, consequences, you know, should those risks not, not pay off. So um, I probably would have gone a little bit harder early on. Right. What does the future look like? What do you see as the main challenges moving forward in your industry? So the IT sector is a really interesting one. Um, as soon as you know, recession talks happen, um, even if it don't eventuate or they don't materialize, um, a lot of the larger tech businesses have already started making deep cuts. Um, you know, we've seen over the last four months or so, we've seen most of the tech titans all cut uh, staffing numbers, cut uh, costs. Uh, in preparation. I personally think that um, our sector uh, and my business in particular will be somewhat uh, shielded from a lot of the what is to come. Um, and the reason for that, I think Australia is in a pretty good position um, in, in comparison to the rest of the world. 
uh, in terms of uh, you know our mining resources and our some of our sectors that are really strong. Um, hopefully, our education sector will bounce back a little bit more, uh, and so it'll be really great to see uh, all of that inflows of, of of cash coming back into the country and and, and start steering here. Uh, in terms of our industry, though, um, you know, more focused on on that. Um, I think the broader industry, there'll be some areas of weakness, uh, in particular, um, some of the tech sectors that support customers like hospitality or retail. Uh, they might be in for a little bit of a, a, a slightly tougher time. Uh, but I think on the whole, um, we'll, be, we'll be okay. Yeah, it's, I think right. it's pretty unlikely we'll have any uh, major impact. Right. And what about personally? What challenges personally do you have in the future? <laughs> Where do I start? Uh, (laughs) there's always challenges right um you know i've got a young family uh and so there's there's plenty on uh with the kids uh you know there's demands of of um you know the wife as well in terms of and you know very lucky in in how much i'm supported uh by my family but of course there's always uh things that need to be done there uh whether it be uh making sure they're, they're cared for and you're spending quality time with them um so i think on the personal front, um, I'm personally uh, on a goal, on a mission at the moment to uh, get in better shape. Uh, and so I'm probably about 60% of the way through that journey. Uh, and so I think it's only going to intensify now. Uh, you know, my diet, my uh, macro calories have been dropped, et cetera. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. But uh, overall, I think uh, I'm actually really optimistic about the future and um, both personally and in business. Fantastic. That's a great note to finish on, Adam. Thank you very much for your time today. It's been excellent. Thank you very much for yours as well. Really appreciate it. No worries. Take care. Thank you.